Hello and welcome to this SimScout tutorial on basic boundary conditions for CFD. So firstly, what do we mean by a boundary condition? Or what do we mean by a boundary? So when we are doing computational fluid dynamics, CFD, normally what we're doing is we're doing some sort of flow simulation on an object that represents the fluid itself. So in this case, we haven't got the pipe walls we've got the fluid within a pipe that we're actually simulating and with this particular problem this simple pipe flow I want to actually say that fluid is coming in in on this face here and also this face here and I want to also say that fluid is exiting through this face here and these are the kind of things that we need to define as boundary conditions, something that is happening on the boundary of your simulation. So that's what we're going to discuss in detail on how to actually define in the SimScale platform. So there are three very basic um, boundary conditions in computational fluid dynamics. The first being the velocity inlet. So that is how flow moves into a fluid domain or in this case, this simple pipe geometry. The second one is pressure outlet, or how flow or where flow can move out of the pipe. And then the third and final basic boundary condition is the wall condition. So where there is a physical obstruction on the boundary that flu fluid cannot pass and it can only travel in parallel to it. So I will start my boundary condition set up by first defining a velocity inlet. So I will come to um, the simulation tree. So if you've if you've come to the point where you need to find out about boundary conditions, you would have already created a simulation and defined a material. And working your way down the checklist system, the next thing you really come to that's highlighted to us is the boundary conditions. And we can come here and create a new boundary condition. And you can see we've got quite a list, but let's stick to the most basic ones that we've just discussed starting with the velocity inlet. And when you first create a velocity inlet boundary condition, you'll notice that you've got three things that you need to define, and that is the velocity in components x, y, and z. So in this example, I could actually select the two faces, and we can see that we need velocity acting in the negative y direction, due to this little cube down here, and we can see the coordinate system. And we could say this is um, negative 0.5 meters per second. And that is exactly how flow is going to act. So when we actually solve a simulation, we're going to see that the, the, um, the velocity magnitude on those two faces and near those two faces is going to be 0.5 meters per second. But this isn't all the um, velocity inlet can do. We can actually come up with many other different and ways of defining a velocity inlet, such as flow rates, which might be more realistic in this case. So I'm going to also show um, other velocity types. So we've got the velocity inlet, and as a subcategory, we can see that there's many different velocity types, if I use the drop down box here, that include this fixed value, which is where we define the three components of velocity. And the other most important um, definition as I mentioned, is the flow rate. So I'm going to select flow rate here. And you can see we've got another option that's either mass flow or volumetric flow. Now you can use either interchangeably. Um, I'm going to go with a volumetric flow rate. And we can see that we have to define um, volumetric flow um, in, a, in a rate of meters cubed per second. And in this case, I'm going to define it as uh, one meter cubed per second. And this will automatically figure out what the um, the best fluid speed is going to be based upon the um, based upon the area size of these faces. So when we actually solve the simulation, instead of as before, we we thought that we were going to have half a meter half a meter per second near each face. In this case, we're going to see actually that one meter cube per second is being applied to each of the faces that we've assigned. Uh, which means that we're going to see a lower flow rate on this bigger face than we are on this smaller face. So we have talked about setting up velocity inlets 
and we've actually set up one of these boundary conditions for both of the faces that we mentioned so this face and this face as velocity flow rate inlets actually next up what we need to do is actually tell tell the um the sim scale platform where flow is coming out so it's it's going in through these faces but um simply put you can't put force fluid into a space without telling it that it can go to some other space and this is what we're going to do with the pressure outlet we're going to define some face or some boundary that flu is allowed to flow out of and as discussed the face that we're actually wanting to assign is this face here so as I did before I'm going to come to boundary conditions I'm going to define actually this time a pressure outlet and I'm going to select the face that I want as my outlet and this this boundary condition is actually nice and simple because we don't have to do anything else zero pascals is a perfectly valid and default value for a pressure outlet for incompressible float so right now what we've done is we've defined some inlet boundaries so we've said that fluid is actually, fluid is actually entering through this boundary here and this boundary here at approximately one meter cube per second per assignment so for both of these faces that we've assigned we're expecting equal flow rates to be um, moving through those boundaries and we've also defined a pressure outlet so this face here is our pressure outlet and we're saying that all of the flow that is moving into the domain is going to be moving out through this face therefore if we've defined a flow rate of one meter cube per second per boundary then two meters cubed in this case is meters cubed per second is moving through this outlet face and you know this is how we help the solver um, build up its definitions we've already got continuity here so we we know that there's flow rate a fixed flow rate moving through the boundary and we also know that at the outlet there's a fixed pressure and all it has to do is figure out what the pressure distribution going back through the simulation is and also what the velocity distribution going through from the inlets are and that's how it's, it's generally going to solve this steady state problem but there's a third thing that we need to consider okay so we've got these two inlet faces and we've got an outlet face but what about all the other boundary conditions is flu just a uh, fluid just able to fall through it or um, is fluid coming into it or going out of it and the answer is of course not um, these are these are walls this is a pipe wall that we're talking about here and to define a pipe wall there is a third boundary condition now I'm going to show you that um, for completeness but actually um, as a key takeaway SimScale by default assigns all the unassigned boundary conditions as physical walls physical boundaries which means you don't actually have to do this third boundary condition definition but I will show you what it is um, just so that you you know where it is and what it looks like and what we're actually assigning by default so as promised I'm going to show you this um, third and final boundary condition that we need to assign here now this is found once again under boundary conditions and we can press this little plus button and we can see here that there's a wall boundary condition and if I click that you will see that um, we've assigned it as a no slip wall which means that there is going to be a velocity gradient um, from the wall to the um, free stream fluid um, which means there's going to be a physical um, boundary layer actually being solved here and it is represented in terms of turbulence by a wall function now this is very standard and very default so you don't necessarily have to worry about what those parameters mean only that the, the faces that you need to assign or the boundaries that you need to assign are going to be everything that is not um, predefined as a velocity inlet or pressure outlet and I could go in and I could select all these these faces manually um, but if you've got hundreds of these faces then you, you might not actually want to do that a smarter way of working might actually be let me just clear this list might actually be to select our inlets and outlets and then invert the assignment by pressing right click invert visible assignments and if you've got only three three inlets and outlets 
and hundreds or possibly thousands of boundaries that are walls, then this would be your, um, your easier workflow. Thank you very much for watching this SimScale tutorial on basic boundary conditions for CFD.